Maximinus I was the first of the year of the six emperors. He would be proclaimed emperor by Germanic legions after the murder of Severus Alexander. His father was an accountant in the governor's office and sprang from ancestors who were Carpi, a Dacian tribe, a people whom Diocletian would eventually drive from their ancient abode in Dacia and transfer to Pannonia. And Maximinus was the commander of the Legio IV Italica when Severus Alexander was assassinated by his own troops in 235. The Pannonian army then elected Maximinus emperor. In 238, which came to be known as the Year of the Six Emperors, a senatorial revolt broke out, leading to the successive proclamation of Gordian I, Gordian II, Pupienus, Balbinus, and Gordian III as emperors in opposition to Maximinus. Maximinus advanced on Rome to put down the revolt, but was halted at Aquileia, where he was assassinated by disaffected elements of the Legio II Parthica. Maximinus is described by several ancient sources, though none are contemporary except Herodian's Roman history. He was a so-called barracks emperor of the third century. His rule is often considered to mark the beginning of the crisis of the third century. Maximinus was the first emperor who hailed neither from the senatorial class nor from the equestrian class. Gordian I was the first of the Gordian dynasty proclaimed emperor alongside his son, Gordian II, while serving as governor of Africa in a revolt against Maximinus and recognized by the Senate. Due to his advanced age, he insisted that his son be associated with him. A few days later, Gordian entered the city of Carthage with the overwhelming support of the population and local political leaders. Gordian I sent assassins to kill Maximinus's Praetorian prefect, Publius Aelius Vitalianus, and the rebellion seemed to be successful. Gordian, in the meantime, had sent an embassy to Rome under the leadership of Publius Licinius Valerianus to obtain the Senate's support for his rebellion. The Senate confirmed the new emperor and many of the provinces gladly sided with Gordian. Opposition came from the neighboring province led by Capelianus, governor of Numidia, and a loyal supporter of Maximinus Thrax. He would invade the African province with the only legion stationed in the region, the 3rd Augusta and other veteran units. Gordian II, at the head of a militia army of untrained soldiers, lost the Battle of Carthage and was killed, and Gordian I took his own life by hanging himself with his belt. The Gordians had ruled only 22 days, the shortest reign of any Roman emperor. Gordian was the first emperor to commit suicide since Otho in 69, during the year of the four emperors. Gordian II. Seeking to overthrow Maximinus Thrax, he died in battle outside Carthage. Since he died before his father, Gordian II had the shortest reign of any Roman emperor at 22 days. Gordian's positive reputation can be attributed to his reportedly amiable character. Both he and his father were said to be fond of literature, even publishing their own voluminous works. While they were strongly interested in intellectual pursuits, they possessed neither the necessary skills nor resources to be considered able statesmen or powerful rulers. Having embraced the cause of Gordian, the Senate was obliged to continue the revolt against Maximinus following Gordian's death, appointing Pupienus and Balbinus as joint emperors. Nevertheless, by the end of 238, the recognized emperor would be Gordian III, Gordian's grandson. According to Edward Gibbon, in the first volume of the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, 22 acknowledged concubines and a library of 62,000 volumes attested to the variety of Gordian's inclinations. And from the productions that he left behind him, it appears that the former as well as the latter were designed for use rather than ostentation. Pupienus was proclaimed emperor jointly with Balbinus by the Senate after the death of Gordian I and II in opposition to Maximinus. During his life, he saw victories over the Sarmatians and Germans. He was described as being impartial in his judicial rulings. Overseeing the campaign against Maximinus, he would recruit Germanic auxiliary troops. After Maximinus was assassinated by his soldiers, just outside Aquileia, 
Pupienus dispatched both Maximinus troops and his own back to their provinces and returned to Rome with his newly acquired German bodyguard. Balbinus, who had failed to keep public order in Rome, had suspected Pupienus to be reading an offensive against him with his Germanic bodyguard, moved to a different part of the imperial palace. Disaffected elements of the Praetorian Guard, who resented serving under Senate-appointed emperors, would go on to kill both emperors after Balbinus, believing that his co-emperor was planning on killing him, failed to heed Pupienus' calls for the Germanic bodyguard to save them. Both were seized and dragged back to the Praetorian barracks, where they were tortured and hacked to death in the bathhouse. Balbinus was proclaimed emperor jointly with Pupienus by the Senate after the deaths of Gordian I and II in opposition to Maximinus. He was a Salii priest of Mars, senator, and was said to have served as governor of various provinces. He would serve as consul twice, 203-211, and with Caracalla in 213. Balbinus was described as being a great speaker and thoughtful administrator, well known throughout the empire for his abilities while Pupienus marched to Ravenna, where he oversaw the campaign against Maximinus, Balbinus remained in Rome, but failed to keep public order. The sources suggest that after Pupienus's victorious return following Maximinus's death, Balbinus suspected Pupienus of wanting to supplant him, and they were soon living in different parts of the imperial palace, where they were later assassinated by disaffected elements of the Praetorian Guard. Gordian III was the grandson of Gordian I, appointed as heir by Pupienus and Balbinus, upon whose deaths he succeeded as emperor. Gordian had assumed the name of his maternal grandfather in 238. In 240, a revolt would be put down, and the following year, he would marry the daughter of the chief of the Praetorian Guard, Time Scythius, who would act as the de facto ruler of the empire. Time Scythius would lead Roman defensive victory at the start of a war with the Persian Sassanid Empire, led by Shapur I. Though Time Scythius would die under unclear circumstances, Gordian could not continue an immediate campaign into Persia, with him returning and celebrating a triumph in Rome. Gaius Julius Priscus, and later on his own brother Marcus Julius Philippus, also known as Philip the Arab, stepped in at this moment as the new Praetorian prefects. Gordian would then start a second campaign. Around February 244, the Sassanids fought back fiercely to halt the Roman advance to Ctesiphon. It is during this campaign that Gordian is said to have died at either the Battle of Misiki against the Persians or at Zytha by the hands of his own dissatisfied army. Philip I was the Praetorian prefect under Gordian III, seizing power after his death. Eusebius, in his ecclesiastical history, held that Philip was the first Christian Roman emperor. This is repeated by Jerome's Chronicon and Orosius's Historia Adversus Paganos. After making peace with the Persians, he would return to Rome, be confirmed by the Senate, and celebrate the city's millennium. He would create the city of Philippopolis and hold many Colosseum games and festivals. Throughout his reign, he had to contend with constant domestic rebellions, barbarian invasions in Europe and wars against the Persians. Offering to resign his position to the Senate, he was met with their full backing instead, namely Gaius Messius Quintus Decius. He would send Decius to the Danube, only for the Danubian legions to declare Decius their emperor and march on Rome. Philip would lose the battle against Decius and is believed to have been killed either during the battle or by his own defeated troops after the battle as they wished to appease their new emperor. Philip II was the son of Philip I and was appointed co-emperor by him. When his father became emperor in 244, the seven-year-old Philip was appointed Caesar. In 247, he became consul and was later elevated by his father to the rank of Augustus and co-ruler. The thousandth anniversary of the founding of Rome occurred during their reign, and great games and spectacles were planned for the celebration. Ancient historians say that Philip the Arab and Philip II were both killed in battle by Decius in 249. 
Decius was proclaimed emperor by the troops in Moesia. He then defeated and killed Philip I in battle. A distinguished politician during the reign of Philip the Arab, Decius was proclaimed emperor by his troops after putting down a rebellion in Moesia. In 249, he defeated and killed Philip near Verona and was recognized as emperor by the Senate afterwards. He would rebuild the damaged Colosseum and construct the Baths of Decius, which survived until the 16th century. During his reign, he attempted to strengthen the Roman state and its religion, leading to the Decian persecution, where a number of prominent Christians, including Pope Fabian, were put to death. In the last year of his reign, Decius co-ruled with his son Herennius Etruscus until they were both killed by the Goths in the Battle of Abritus. Herennius Etruscus was the son of Decius and appointed co-emperor by him. Decius defeated Philip in battle and was then proclaimed emperor by the Roman Senate. Herennius Etruscus was elevated to Caesar in 250, then further raised to Augustus in May 251. When the Goths, under Kineva, invaded the Danubian provinces, Herennius Etruscus was sent with a vanguard, followed by the main body of Roman troops, led by Decius. They ambushed Kineva at the Battle of Nicopolis at Istrum in 250, routing him before being ambushed and routed themselves at the Battle of Bero. Herennius Etruscus was killed in the Battle of Abritus the following year alongside his father. After the deaths of both emperors, Trebonianus Gallus, who had been governor of Moesia, was elected emperor by the remaining Roman forces. Ostilian was the younger son of Decius, named Caesar by his father, and proclaimed co-emperor by Trebonianus Gallus. And after Decius and Herennius Etruscus, Hostilian's brother, were killed at the Battle of Abritus, an ambush by the Goths, Trebonianus Gallus was proclaimed emperor by the legions. Almost immediately, he elevated Hostilian to co-emperor and his own son, Volusianus, to Caesar. Hostilian died soon after, either due to plague or being murdered by Trebonianus Gallus. Trebonianus Gallus was a senator and general prior to being proclaimed emperor after the deaths of Decius and Herennius Etruscus. According to Dexippus, Gallus had conspired with the Goths to kill his predecessors. When the army heard the news, the soldiers proclaimed Gallus emperor despite Hostilianus, Decius' surviving son, ascending the imperial throne in Rome. Gallus may have also ordered a localized and uncoordinated persecution of Christians. However, only two incidents are known to us. The exile of Pope Cornelius to Centum Salae, where he died in 253, and the exile of his successor Pope Lucius right after his election. The latter was recalled to Rome by Valerian. By 253 multiple revolts, Scythian raids and Shapur I's invasion in the east would cause great disaster for Gallus's reign. Greatly displeased by Gallus, the legions would proclaim Emilian as their emperor. This in turn urged Gallus request reinforcements from Gaul under the command of the future emperor Publius Licinius Valerianus. Some claim that after an initial defeat, Gallus and Volusian were murdered by their own troops. Or Gallus did not have the chance to face Emilian at all because his army went over to the usurper. If either case is to be believed, both Gallus and Volusian were killed in August 253. Volusianus was the son of Gallus and appointed co-emperor by him. After Emperor Decius and his son and co-ruler Herennius Etruscus died in battle in June 251, Trebonianus Gallus was elected emperor in the field by the legion. Gallus raised Hostilian, the younger son of Decius, to Augustus, co-emperor, and elevated Volusianus to Caesar. After the death of Hostilian in July or August 251, Volusianus was raised to Augustus. The short reign of Gallus and Volusianus was notable for the outbreak of a plague, which is said by some to be the reason for Hostilian's death the invasion of the Sasanian Empire and the raids of the Goths. Volusianus was killed alongside his father in August 253 by their own soldiers who were terrified of the forces of the usurper Amelian, which were marching towards Rome. Emilianus was the commander in Moesia and proclaimed emperor by his soldiers after defeating barbarians in opposition to Gallus. 
Commander of the Moesian troops, he obtained an important victory against the invading Goths and was, for this reason, acclaimed emperor by his army. He then moved quickly to Roman Italy, where he defeated Emperor Trebonianus Gallus at the Battle of Interamna Nahars in August 253, only to be killed by his own men a month later, when another general, Valerian, proclaimed himself emperor and moved against Aemilian with a larger army. Valerian was the army commander in Raetia and Noricum, proclaimed emperor by the legions in opposition to Emilian. He would divide the empire between himself, taking the east, and his son, taking the west. He persecuted believers of the Christ and was later taken captive by the Persian emperor Shapur I after the Battle of Edessa, becoming the first Roman emperor to be captured as a prisoner of war, causing shock and instability throughout the Roman empire. The unprecedented event and the unknown fate of the captured emperor generated a variety of different reactions and new narratives about the Roman Empire in diverse contexts. Gallienus was the son of Valerian, appointed joint emperor, sole emperor after Valerian's capture and subsequent death. He would declare a recognition of the Christ, repelling his father's persecutions. He won numerous military victories against usurpers and Germanic tribes, but was unable to prevent the secession of important provinces. His 15-year reign was the longest in half a century. He would dispatch military units consisting primarily of cavalry throughout the empire, known as comitatenses. This act as unknowingly laying down the groundwork for future emperors Diocletian and Constantine I. He would also forbid senators from holding military positions, further weakening the authority of the Senate. Aureolus proclaimed himself emperor in Mediolanum in 268, but was defeated outside the city by Gallienus and besieged inside. While the siege was ongoing, Gallienus was assassinated, stabbed to death by the officer Cecropius as part of a conspiracy. Claudius II was the army commander in Illyria and was proclaimed emperor after Gallienus's death. Most of his life was spent fighting off Germanic and Scythian tribal invasions into the Balkan Peninsula. During his reign as the Roman Emperor, he would defeat a huge Gothic invasion, where his cavalry commander, the future Emperor Aurelian, would take thousands of prisoners after destroying his Gothic counterpart's force. Crossing the Alps, he would begin the conquests of the Gallic Empire a breakaway state that controlled the Roman Empire's territory west of the Rhine. He won several victories and soon regained control of Hispania and the Rhone River Valley of Gaul. This set the stage for the later destruction of the Gallic Empire under Aurelian. In 269, his preparations of war against the Vandals in Pannonia would be cut short after he fell victim to the plague of Cyprian, leading to his death the following year. Prior to his death, he would name Aurelian as his successor. Though his brother would seize power briefly, the Senate would immediately deify Claudius as Divus Claudius Gothicus. Quintilus was the brother of Claudius II, proclaimed emperor after his death. Quintilus's claim to be emperor was challenged by Aurelian, who was proclaimed emperor by the legions he commanded. Quintilus's reign lasted no more than six months. Different sources report his cause of death as murder by his own soldiers in battle with Aurelian or by suicide. Aurelian was the supreme commander of the Roman cavalry prior to being proclaimed emperor by Danube legions after Claudius II's death in opposition to Quintilus. Born of humble background near the Danube River, he would join the military in 235, climbing the ranks and defeating invading barbarians north of the Danube and east of the Rhine. He would go on to lead the emperor's cavalry in 268. By 273, he would restore the empire's eastern provinces by conquering the Pamirim Empire, and the following year he would conquer the Gallic Empire and reunite the Rome Empire in its entirety. He would secure the Danube by abandoning Dacia, reinforce Rome's walls with the construction of Aurelian walls, and attempt to halt the devaluation of the Roman currency. He would demand that he be hailed as Dominus et Deus and earn the title of Restitutor Orbis. He would strengthen the position of the sun god Sol Invictus as the main divinity of the Roman pantheon. 
thus establishing a policy of one faith, one empire. Due to this, believers of the Christ would be persecuted. Due to the deaths of the Sassanid king Shapur, the first in 272, and Hormuz the first in 273, Aurelian sought to make campaign against the weak rule of Bahram the first after he had put down a rebellion in Gaul and a Germanic invasion. Though while waiting to cross over to Thrace, he would be murdered. He is remembered today for building the city of Orléans in France. Tacitus was the alleged princeps senatus. He would be proclaimed emperor by his soldiers in Campania after Aurelian's death. During his short reign, he campaigned against the Goths in the Heruli, for which he received the title Gothicus Maximus. After the assassination of Aurelian, the army, apparently showing remorse towards its role in the death of the beloved emperor, relinquished the right of choosing his successor to the Senate. After a few weeks, the throne was offered to the aged princep senatus Tacitus. He would restore ancient senatorial powers, though later on Diocletian would rescind all of them. After rebuking the Frankish and Alemannic invasion of Gaul, according to Aurelius Victor, Eutropius, and the Historia Augusta, Tacitus died of fever at Tiana in Cappadocia around June 276. In a contrary account, Zosimus claims he was assassinated after appointing one of his relatives to an important command in Syria. Florianus was the brother or more likely half-brother of Tacitus. Florianus was the maternal half-brother of Tacitus, who was proclaimed emperor in late 275 after the unexpected death of Emperor Aurelian. After Tacitus died the following year, allegedly assassinated as a consequence of a military plot, Florianus proclaimed himself emperor with the recognition of the Roman Senate and much of the empire. However, the new emperor soon had to deal with the revolt of Probus, who rose up shortly after Florianus ascended the throne, with the backing of the provinces of Egypt, Syria, Palestine, and Phoenicia. Probus took advantage of the terrain of the Cilician Gates and the hot climate of the area, to which Florianus' army was unaccustomed to chip away at their morale. Florianus' army rose up against him and killed him. Probus was a general who would be proclaimed emperor by the Eastern legions in opposition to Florianus. Probus was an active and successful general, as well as a conscientious administrator. And in his reign of six years, he secured prosperity for the inner provinces while withstanding repeated invasions of barbarian tribes on almost every sector of the frontier. After repelling the foreign enemies of the empire, Probus was forced to handle several internal revolts, but demonstrated leniency and moderation to the vanquished wherever possible. In his reign, the constitutional authority of the Roman Senate was fastidiously maintained and the victorious emperor, who had carried his army to victory over the Rhine, professed himself dependent on the sanction of the Senate. Upon defeating the Germans, Probus re-erected the ancient fortifications of Emperor Hadrian between the Rhine and Danube rivers, protecting the Agri Decumates, and exacted from the vanquished a tribute of manpower to resettle depopulated provinces within the empire and provide for adequate defense of the frontiers. Despite his widespread popularity, Probus was killed in a mutiny of the soldiers while in the middle of preparations for the Persian War which would be carried out under his successor, Carus. Carus was the Praetorian prefect under Probus, who would seize power before or after Probus's murder. During his short reign, Carus fought the Germanic tribes and Sarmatians along the Danube frontier with success. He died while campaigning against the Sassanid Empire and is believed to have died of unnatural causes. It was reported that he had been struck by lightning. He was succeeded by his sons, Carinus and Numerian, creating a dynasty which, though short-lived, provided further stability to the resurgent empire. In the sphere of civil affairs, Carus is remembered principally for the final suppression of the authority of the Senate, which had been partially restored under Tacitus and Probus. He declined to accept their ratification of his election, informing them of the fact by a haughty and distant dispatch. He was the last emperor to have united a civil with a military education. 
Though Karras was known throughout his life for his austere and virtuous manners, the suspicion of his complicity in Probus' death, along with his haughty conduct towards the Senate, tarnished his reputation before his death, and Julian, as Gibbon observes, conspicuously places him among the tyrants of Rome in his catalogue of the Caesars. Numerian was the son of Carus and succeeded jointly with Carinus. In terms of his character, he was described as a great orator and poet, to such an extent that the Senate would raise a statue inscribed with, to the most powerful of orators. The death of Carus left Numerian and Carinus as the new Augusti. Carinus quickly returned to Rome from Gaul, arriving in January 284, while Numerian remained in the east. The Roman retreat from Persia was orderly and unopposed, for the Persian king, Baram II, was still struggling to establish his authority. By March 284, Numerian began moving westward. In Emesa, he was apparently still alive and in good health. Coins were issued in his name in Sisychus at some time before the end of 284, but it is impossible to know whether he was still in the public eye by that point. After Emesa, Numerian's staff, including the prefect Opper, reported that Numerian suffered from an inflammation of the eyes and had to travel in a closed coach. When the army reached Bithynia, or Thrace, some of Numerian's soldiers smelled an odor reminiscent of a decaying corpse emanating from the coach. They opened its curtains and found Numerian dead. Carinus was the son of Carus and was appointed joint emperor where he succeeded jointly with Numerian. Official accounts of his character and career which portray him as debauched and incapable have been filtered through the propaganda of his successful opponent, Diocletian. He is remembered as one of the worst emperors. Arius Aper, the Praetorian prefect, Diocletian, commander of the bodyguards, affirmed that Numerian had been assassinated by the prefect and after executing the latter, he was proclaimed emperor by the soldiers. Carinus left Rome at once and set out for the east to meet Diocletian. On his way through Pannonia, he put down the usurper Sabinus Julianus, and in July 285, he encountered the army of Diocletian at the Battle of the Margus River, the modern Morava River in Moesia. Historians differ on what then ensued. At the Battle of the Margus, according to one account, the valor of his troops had gained the day, but Carinus was assassinated by a tribune whose wife he had seduced. Another account represents the battle as resulting in a complete victory for Diocletian and claims that Carinus's army deserted him. This account may be confirmed by the fact that Diocletian kept in service Carinus's Praetorian Guard commander, Titus Claudius Aurelius Aristobulus, 